We have multiple volcanic systems in the Reykjanes Peninsula of Iceland. They are part of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, which itself is part of the global oceanic ridges. They are among the most gentle eruptions. Millions of them have happened. Hundreds of them happen every week and every month. We never notice them because they are under the five kilometers of water. We are lucky in Iceland we see them on the surface and we can study them. We have seismogram uh, network that can pick up all the tremors from them. This is the latest one from the Grindavik area, as you can see. We have a pattern of rising of tremors. Tectonically shows that the earth is opening up gradually, but without creating a gap. Magma rises to fill that gap. Glue it back practically, creating new land. The wave of this coming actually from the what we call a reckoning reach from the ocean toward the Reykjanes Peninsula, like a wave moving inward. And this flexure of the earth crust through these uh, fault lines actually is the one that pushes up the magma. And we have a way to see uh, in three dimension these tremors and the bubbles you see here, these circles, are each a tremor of an earthquake with a magnitude and a depth. And you can see that we have a system of the what we call Swartzengi, uh, volcanic system and the uh, Kristovic system, which is uh, denoted here by the Kellier, Kellier and uh, Claire Forward. Now, Claire Forward up to now was five kilometers deep. It is stopped at that depth. That was the earthquakes uh, that were just practically transferring the movement from the sourcing system toward the east. At the moment, we now see that there is a more shallower earthquakes from that system near the clear forward rising uh, toward the shallower depth that means that system also has reached a flexure that actually is opening up to let the magma rise magma rising there eventually not immediately we lead two systems be active swartzengi system which has uh, actually caused damage to the uh, through the reckoning ridge and reckoning peninsula to the town of Grindavik is going to erupt probably this week. But the Krisovic system is gradually building up the pressure. It has been last time active in the medieval times, 12th century, middle of the 12th century, and created the lava field. That is an uh, important system in a way because that area is full of glacial lakes and the water level in the aquifers is relatively uh, shallower and we have a you know saturated soil. So practically, if we create phreatic eruptions, means explosive, more explosive than the gentler ones that we see in the, for example, Fagedesfjord and other places. And these two systems are gradually awakening up. I have videos about this, which I put at the end of this video. You can watch them and enjoy. Millions of tons of magma are involved at the moment in Sorsengi. Sorsengi is rising up and then transferring horizontally this magma toward the fault line in the uh, Sundunka craters and the Hagerfell. So it will erupt there. And then gradually we will see that over years probably that the Krisovic volcanic system also will erupt. Icelandic people being the very tough and industrious people, uh, I'm sure the whole world is watching to learn from them because so far we have seen how Beautifully, they have managed to cope with what happened in Grindavik, for example. And uh, we will learn a lot from them over the coming years. And you will see that at the end of it, that uh, something like Blue Lagoon will emerge and they will use it again for the benefit of their country and uh, ev everywhere else in the world who may actually have access to such resources from within the earth. Why the volcano can't erupt? We know that the tremors are continuing in the Reckoning Peninsula, especially around the Swartzengi Sundunka craters. We see the pattern is a loose pattern. It is not like the eruption times we saw in the Fagodesfio or Litlikotro or the earlier eruption of the Sundunka. We see that it, it, uh, this pattern repeats every six hours. We know that in that area we have cracks in the ground. This is the Mid Atlantic Ridge having grabbins, faults forming, uh, and these faults, uh, which are normal faults, are like a wave actually moving, flexing with something that is squeezing them. Like a toothpaste, they are being squeezed. And this squeezing of this uh, uh, 
flexure of and flexure of the ground creates this pattern. It rises the ground, sinks slightly, rises, sinks, sinks. We can see through the tremors, the depth of the tremors. We can see inside the earth something is rising, rising and pulsating at the same time. This is probably the lava opening up the fault lines as it goes and then rising slightly, getting it squeezed upward. It may be related to the diurnal pattern of the sun and the moon creating every six hour tide on the earth. This is a mathematical model. We have to study it carefully. It's, it's mostly beyond the geologist's knowledge, but there must be a pattern that is related to the moon and sun gravitational pull and flexure of the lithosphere creating this pattern. We are lucky that in the Reckonus Peninsula, we have an east-west direction that we can actually see this pattern forming in that area. And there is an eruption possible, but just we need enough squeeze to actually rise up the magma like the toothpaste to the surface and then we will have an eruption, like what we saw in the Fagradesville. This is one of the earliest stages of the Fagradesville eruption. You can see that. It's a tiny volcano in the world scale of it, but it was dramatic. You could see the magma forming, boiling, creating lava, and spreading to the surface. This is the Mid-Atlantic region. This is the way all the uh, Mid-Oceanic regions around the world actually operate. I think that this volcano will erupt, but not at this stage. This is just squeezing up the magma upward. We're going again to study the depth uh, diagram of the earthquakes at the uh, Swartzengi, Blue Lagoon, and uh, Grindavik. And this time, uh, for the interesting part that the clay forward is playing in that. That's a part of the Krisovic volcanic system. Just a few days ago, the earthquakes were small. They were all at the depth of 5 kilometers. Now it seems they're rising. We have bigger earthquake, 3.3 we had, and then the earthquakes are getting shallower, rising. Up to now, what we had at the depth of 5 kilometers was the fault lines transferring the movement from the Swartzengi toward the east. And with that was the reason we had earthquakes in the uh, Christobic and uh, Claire Forward uh, area. Now, it seems that area has opened up just enough that the magma is jumping through the cracks that are created, through the gra uh, um, gaps, and coming up, those smaller earthquakes are a sign of magma rising. They can decrease or they can increase by the depth. So we have two scenarios. One scenario is that the earthquake will rise, magma with them rising, and they will increase when they reach the surface. Another th scenario is that they will decrease, actually. We may not have bigger uh, earthquakes anymore, and the rising of a magma will stop at some depth, forming a seal, practically. And this is the situation that we are now seeing. We have to wait and see. Up to now, it was moving the transferring through the transform faults toward the east. Now we, it seems the Krisovic is actually awakening. It may lead and uh, create a pathway for the magma to rise from the depth of the 10 kilometer, which is across toward the 5 and the 5 rising to the surface. This is a scary situation because we are the Swartzengi, Blue Lagoon, Grindavik volcanic system is now active and the magma movement in that direction can actually increase the chances of the, you know, risk to the buildings and the structures in the vicinity of those areas, including the uh, Reykjavik, the capital of Iceland. 